Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well today. Thank you so much for joining me. And today it is my pleasure to talk to you about a new Italian brand. This brand is called Agatho and the fragrance is called Fauno. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Fauno by Agatho, I do wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxing, special guests, interviews, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. So this brand currently has six fragrances. The perfumer is Maurizio Cerizza, an Italian perfumer. It's an Italian brand. It came out in 2019. And like I said, they currently have six fragrances. And so they were all released concurrently. And this is the only one personally that I've gotten my nose on. I do want to mention that if you are interested in sampling any of the fragrances from this brand or picking up a bottle of any fragrance from this brand, you may do so at maxaroma.com. I'm gonna be leaving their information down below. They're located in Long Island City, New York. They have a lot of really hard to find designer and niche fragrances for really, really good prices. And they also have that sampling option available on their website. So if you wish to get an eight milliliter travel atomizer, the lipstick style atomizers, you may do so from their website and they have really, really good prices, super fast shipping and the customer service is next to none. So this one is called Fauno, which translates to fawn. And I got a look at the notes and it has pimento, tuberose, magnolia, incense, cedarwood, galbanum, some really interesting notes. And I thought to myself, man, this is going to be a very bright, vivid, green, fougere type of a fragrance, a little herbaceous as well. And of course I got my nose on it and I was really blown away. I'm really loving this fragrance and I actually got about two or three compliments from it yesterday when I went to a restaurant with a colleague of mine. Anyway, I'm really excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with a beautiful presentation. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you are going to get the strength and the vigor of this fragrance. It opens up quite strong with these green notes. And of course there's galbanum in, in here. And I'm kind of getting a combination of galbanum and juniper berry. I know juniper is not listed as a note, so perhaps it's really just the cedar wood that's in here that's giving me that very rugged, sort of masculine bad boy kind of a vibe about it but I think it's a really nice combination of those green herbal and woodsy ingredients that you're gonna get in the opening. There's that spicy kick in here as well from the pimento. It's not too strong and it's not the type of spicy kick that's gonna make you sneeze or anything like that. So I really do appreciate that it lacks that component. But then there's also this mysterious aura that is embedded into the profile on account of the use of the incense note. Now, I'm not quite sure what incense is in here. I do perceive it actually to be a little bit smoky, just adding that enigmatic quality to the composition. I don't get olibanum or frankincense because that kind of gives off like a lemony pine vibe and I'm not necessarily getting that from this. Although it is a little resinous and it is a little balsamic in the base, I'm not necessarily getting olibanum, but I am getting a touch of smoke. And so I can kind of see the role that the incense plays in here and it's very well done. In terms of the floral ingredients that are in here, so you have magnolia and you have tuberose. I think if anything, I would say the tuberose is perhaps a little bit stronger than the magnolia because the floral component that's in here is of a recognizable nature to me. And I don't have a ton of experience with magnolia. And so I am kind of picking up on that floral heart in the fragrance, but it's not nearly as strong as the smoke, the woods, 
the resins, the um, spiciness of this fragrance. It's a very sort of mature, sophisticated, gentlemanly, like a modern gentleman type of a fragrance and the ideal fragrance to wear in like a suit and tie. Of course, if you can afford to wear it casually, by all means, please do. These are just recommendations, but it definitely gives off a very confident, masculine, sophisticated, almost bad boy and rugged George Clooney, James Bond type of a vibe. And so I'm really enjoying this fragrance. So it does kind of remind me of Dark Rebel by John Varvatos. And I have to admit, that's a fragrance that I'm not really crazy about just because I'm not the biggest fan of Juniper, but there is something that's done in this fragrance that comes across so natural, so grounded, so organic in terms of the notes that are being used that I'm really enjoying this DNA. I think the perfumer Maurizio Cerizza did an amazing job with this fragrance because when I'm reading the note breakdown with the tobacco, how could I forget tobacco? With all of the ingredients that are in here, I'm like, yep, I smell that, yep, I smell that too. And as I'm going through the list, I pretty much smell everything with the exception of some of the florals. And so I'm not really getting too much of that magnolia or tuberose, although I can kind of see the effect that it's having in the core of the fragrance. I'm just not getting it too strongly. It's really more about the spice and the tobacco and the woods. This is a really nice, rugged, bad boy fragrance without necessarily having rough edges. And so I've smelled some fragrances in my life that are so smoky, they're unwearable. I've smelled some fragrances that are so challenging in terms of the amount of smoke and resins that they include. And there are some fragrances out there, admittedly enough, that I absolutely love, like Interlude for Men by Amouage, but I can see how one would feel self-conscious wearing that in public, especially if they wear a little bit too much, right? Like 30 sprays or something like that, hint, hint. But but in any case, this fragrance is a really well done take on cedar, incense, tobacco, and spice. And I'm personally loving this one. And despite how heavy handed some of these ingredients may sound, I actually see myself wearing this one in the spring for sure. I think as long as you're wearing it indoors in a climate controlled environment and you're pretty conservative on the sprayer, you can get away with wearing three or four sprays of this one in the springtime, no questions asked. Getting back to my story, so I actually met up with one of my coworkers yesterday and we went to a Mexican restaurant. As soon as we got in the car, he complimented me immediately. He goes, man, whatever you're wearing smells really good. We got to the Mexican restaurant and as the waiter was bringing us our food, he said, something at this table smells very, very good. And so I think that that's when I realized that I may have over applied. I did about seven or eight sprays. Um, but in any case, I love the smell. Definitely a fragrance that I will continue to wear. So happy to have this beautiful bottle and this beautiful presentation in my collection. You can see the amount of time and thought and energy energy and passion that was poured into this project. And so that leaves me really wanting to try some of the other fragrances from this brand because I have heard a lot of really amazing things about their fragrances. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I certainly find this to be a unique fragrance. I know I made a comparison to one other fragrance, but that's sort of to convey the type of DNA that it has and the and type of olfactory classification that it would fall under, the umbrella that it would fall under. But this is unique. It's done in a way that smells very natural, very organic, and also kind of unapologetic. And I think that that's kind of what lends this fragrance its bad boy appeal, if you will. Overall smell is very pleasant. However, I probably just wouldn't do like 15 or 20 sprays with this one because it is quite strong. Longevity on this one, I would say eight to 10 hours. So that's really good. Projection on this one was fantastic for the first hour and a half of application. It radiated, I think beyond an arm's length because I was getting noticed when I wore this one. And it didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that seven to seven and a half hour mark. And so it performs really well. Versatility on this one is really good. I think I just wouldn't wear too much of it in the dead of summer. I can see how those woodsy, smoky, spicy tobacco and resinous qualities might be a little bit too overbearing if you are wearing it when it's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit out there. But I do find this to be pretty versatile. I think for most, given the price tag, I can see them really enjoying this one um, for like a special occasion when you really want to get heads to turn, you want to make a statement. It's definitely that powerful of a fragrance, I believe. And in terms of the presentation, 
one of the most beautiful presentations I've seen. I love the uniqueness in the bottle and the cap and the wooden box with the graphic on the front. Just everything about it is really beautiful. So my final verdict on this fragrance is if you are looking for a bad boy, rugged, masculine type of a fragrance, you like notes of galbanum, tobacco, pimento, cedarwood, smoke, please check this fragrance out. I think it's going to be right up your alley. And like I said, Max Aroma does have that option of sampling this fragrance. And so you don't have to commit to purchasing a full bottle, but I'm gonna leave information for that down below. If you are interested in discovering either this fragrance or this brand as a whole more, and I'm personally interested in discovering what else they have to offer because really, this is an amazing fragrance. I can't wait to smell some of the other fragrances that I've seen some of my colleagues on this platform talking about. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching. That was my review of Fauno by Agatho. If you own or have tried any fragrance from this brand, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. I always love the interaction. Also, if you like this video or if you took something of value from this video, please show your support by liking this video. It tells YouTube that you like this type of content. You would like to see more of it. And of course, if you're new to this channel and you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. And while you're at it, make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.